In this video, we're going to build a tab system with Django templates, and we're going to show some best practices for these templates. We're going to use a tab system from tailwindelements.com, and we're going to see how to build that in our templates. So to begin with, what we're going to do is actually get the code for Tailwind Elements. If we go to the quick start, which I'll link below the video, you can see that this is a plugin that extends the functionality of Tailwind CSS with interactive components such as dropdowns, modals, and of course tabs, which we're gonna use in this video. So at the right hand sidebar, we've got a CDN section. We're gonna click that and we're gonna copy this code containing style sheets and script tags into a base template of a Django project. So let's go to VS Code and I'm gonna replace this Tailwind import here with these script and link tags. And what this does is it includes the core Tailwind library here, but it also includes the style sheets for some of these Tailwind elements components. Now we also need to grab JavaScript to make these dynamic components like dropdowns work. So let's go back to the page. And at the bottom, we have this script tag containing the JavaScript for these Tailwind elements components. And that enables the behavior that we see with these components. So we're gonna copy that and we're gonna copy it to the bottom of the body tag, as it says here in the documentation, require that bundled file just before the body closing tag. So that's the setup to actually work with Tailwind elements. What we have here is a tab system where we click a tab and it dynamically loads content associated with that tab. We're gonna show how to build that and how to do it using partial templates and keep code clean and avoid repetition of code. So let's start by copying the code for these tabs. We're gonna copy that into the template. Now, if we go back to the Django project I've got set up, we have an index.html file. This extends the base.html file, which contains all of those imports we just had. And let's replace this content here with the code from tailwindelements.com. Now we're gonna save that and run the Django development server here. And if we go to that page, we see that we have the tabs here at the top and we can click through them and this dynamically loads up content associated with that tab. Let's go back to the template. Now we have a div here at the bottom that contains a bunch of inner divs that have the content associated with each tab. And these each have an ID and that's the ID that's triggered by each of the tabs above. Now the tabs are list components that contain an anchor tag. And Tailwind Elements looks for a particular attribute and that's these ones here, the data BS target. That's set to the ID of the element that should be loaded when that tab is clicked. Now, the thing to note is we have a lot of repetition in these anchor tags. We have a list element with an anchor tag, and there's a lot of repetition of classes and repetition of very similar attributes. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this code into a partial component, and then we can include that in the template. And that way we can avoid repeating ourselves, and it makes it easier to add new tabs later on because we've encapsulated the elements for the tab within a particular partial. So let's see what we mean by that. I'm going to copy that first list element that represents the home tab. And you can see that on the page here at the top. It's this one here. We're going to copy that into this partials tab.html file, which is currently empty. So I'm going to paste that in here. And now we have the list element with the anchor tag that represents the home tab on this page. Now we've hard coded the text for this anchor tag. We're going to see how we can pass context into the template in a second. For now, let's go back to index.html and we can delete the code associated with these tabs. So I've done that now. All of the list elements underneath this UL tag are now gone. We've deleted those tabs. So now we can use the include template tag from Django. So I'm going to include a partial here that's going to be called tab.html. And now that we've done that, we can go back to our page and reload. Now you see we only have one tab now. We're going to include four tabs. So let's go back here and we'll copy this and paste it three times. And once we've done that, we can go back to the page. And now we see four home tabs that are all active in our template. So yes, at the moment we've reduced the repetition of this code, but the problem is the text is hard coded and they all have the active tab associated with them. And also when we click them, they don't load up the correct content. They all load up that tab one content. So in order to remedy this, when we use the include the template tag, we can pass additional context to the partial template. And that can tell the partial template what to show in particular areas and also what it can access within that partial template. So in order to do that, in order to pass additional context, we use the with keyword and then we can pass keyword arguments to these templates. So I'm going to pass a keyword argument called name and I'm going to set that equal to home. And we're going to copy that and paste it three times below. And we're going to change the names of these tabs to match what they were before. So that one was profile. This one is messages. And that one is contact. So what we're doing here is we're passing additional context with a key of name 
into this partial template that you can see here. And now that name is accessible within this template. So what we can do instead of hard coding home here, we can then use the Django template syntax to actually render out that dynamic value. So if we save these files and go back to our page and refresh, you see we now have the correct names for the tabs. Now there's still problems here. When we click the other tabs, it doesn't load the correct content. And that's because Tailwind Elements expects an attribute name to be set to the IDs of the content that should be loaded. So what we're gonna do is see this in action here. We have these data BS target attributes. And these are set to the IDs of the element that should be loaded when the tab is clicked. This one here has an ID of tabs home. This is in the index.html file, and you can see it here. It's this one with tabs home as an ID, and it says tab one content. Now the ones below that have tabs profile, tabs messages, and tabs contact as their ID. So we need to set this dynamically within the partial template. And we have the name being passed in, so we can actually render that dynamically here like that. So now this attribute here will point to the correct ID within our index.html file to load the correct content when it's clicked. Now there's a couple of other attributes we want to change. The ID of this anchor tag, that should also be replaced with the name. And finally, this attribute here, area controls, let's replace that with name as well. And something else we'd like to change is this href for the anchor tag. Instead of always loading tabs home, we can put the name in here as well. Now there's actually one other thing I'd like to do in this partial template. Let's remove the active class from these tabs. Otherwise, every one of them will have the active class. If we remove that, we'll find that none of them do, and we'll see how to add the correct active tag in a minute. So let's remove that and save the file. And if we go back to the page, when we refresh this page, we see we now have four tabs, none of them are active. And when we click these, it loads the correct content. So now we have a system that works, and we have that by creating a partial template that encapsulates the tab element. And in the parent template, when we want to actually create tabs, we can simply include these tab files and we can pass context into them to determine what's shown. But the important thing is the styles that determine what a tab looks like are all encapsulated within one file. So if we need to change something later on, for example, if we want to change the background color, we only need to add that in one place. So what I'm gonna do here is add a background color of red 900, just temporarily, and we'll see what this looks like now. And we should find that it changes the color of all of the tabs. This might not look good, but it's just highlighting what I'm saying. You only need to change one thing now because we're not repeating the code. So let's now remove these horrendous red styles and go back to the way it was. The final thing I want to do in this video is add the active tab at the beginning. And we want to add that at the beginning to the home element. So let's refresh this page. And it should be this tab here that we're adding the active tab to. Now you can see when we click another tab, it does automatically add the active class and that's being done by the Tailwind Elements JavaScript. So that's working fine, but what we need to do is when it first loads, we want to give the active class to this tab here that says home. So let's go back to the index.html file and we're gonna add a final bit of context to this first tab here, it's called active. And we're gonna set this equal to true. Now we only need to add that to the first one and then we're gonna check in the partial template here, whether or not active is available in the context of that partial. And if it is available, we'll render the active tab. So if we go to the bottom of the class list, I'm gonna use a template if statement here. And we're gonna say if active, then we will add the active class to the list of classes. And then we can end the if statement here. So we're only adding active as a class. If active is available in the context, and you can see that in this parent template, we're only passing active into the first of these include statements. So I hope that makes sense. You can see that you can pass multiple keywords into a template as additional context. If we save all these files and go back to the web page, when we refresh, we now get the active class added to the home tab when it first loads. And with that, that's all for this quick video. We're showing how to keep our templates dry and avoid repetition of code by extracting similar code to partial templates and then including them within parent templates. And that means, as we saw earlier, that when we need to change one of the styles or some of the content of that component, we only need to do it in one place rather than in multiple places. And that's less error prone and much more maintainable. And I think that highlights some of the main benefits of creating partial templates and including them within parent templates. Now there's other ways that we could have done this. Instead of four include statements, we could have included a tabs partial and we could have passed a list of tabs into that single partial. And then within the partial, we could have rendered out these tabs using a for loop. So there are different ways of doing this. 
This is just one option, but I think it demonstrates what we're showing in this video. Now, obviously, we don't want to go over the top and create partial HTML templates for every element in our project, but I think where it makes sense, these are useful techniques to know about. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.